Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome again this evening. I have another special guest. I have my good brother, Supreme Rock, coming through the night to talk about this very important topic. Yes, you know, every now and then we were on this channel, we would cross over into, you know, things regarding the, com uh, the community. And I think this is important. This is regarding the black community. This is dealing with the culture, you know. Uh, before we get into that, uh, I just want to welcome you guys uh, to the Black Empowerment Movement channel. Please remember to subscribe, like, share the videos. Uh, keep supporting us. We're still trying to get to a thousand subscribers before the year is over with. So please remember to subscribe, share and like. That's the only way we can get there, y'all. Spread the word, you know, so we can keep making uh, great videos, bringing great guests like we have tonight. Supreme Rock coming through. But I'm not going to get into all of that right now. I just want to jump straight into this. Before we can, we need to introduce the guest, you know, good brother Supreme Rock. Go ahead and introduce yourself and let the people know a little bit about you and what you uh, what you represent. Yeah, man. Um, before we get started, man, I want to give a shout out to the um, Honorable uh, Mosiah Marcus Garvey, man. Today is his birthday. Mm -hmm. so we definitely want to give a shout out to the, to the elder, man, the OG one of the original OGs of the movement. Uh, yeah, man, my name is Supreme Rock Africa, man. Uh, I'm a, I got a podcast with my co-host, Hip Hop School, past and present. Come on every Monday, 8 p.m. Central on YouTube. Check it out. Uh, living in Fort Worth, Texas, man. And just try to play my part and do my part, man, and uh, in encouraging and empowering black people. Indeed, indeed. And and I've been knowing Supreme for a long time, guys. And uh, I want to say started back in like 2014. That's when I really got introduced to Supreme and uh, RBR, uh, RBG Nation out here in Fort Worth. And uh, I think it was Temple. That's Temple, uh, Baba Amin and, and uh, Uhuru Academy. And first, you don't even remember when we first met. Yeah, yeah, it was at Temple. It was at Temple. Uh, yeah, man, I seen you so many places. I really don't remember the first place we did meet at. Man, the, the first place. time, first time we ever spoke when we had Temple on Brentwood Stir. We had moved yeah. to Good Dikes, and you pulled up, and you was like, "Man, where can I get a dashiki from?" Ah, uh, yep, yep. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. Yeah, that's yeah. where I remember yeah. from. Yeah, and, and even before then, I used to just, uh, you know, come. I used to come to Temple, you know, just sit back and, and peep and listen. Uh, you know, man, y'all was giving a strong message back then. And, and shout out to the Temple New African Unity, man. Bye bye, man. Man, I miss Temple. Man. Yeah, me too, man. It was a, um, it was a very dope experience, man. It was very empowering. Uh, a lot of spiritual energy. A lot of uh, things got kick-started from the Temple of New African Unity, man. Uh, if you look around Fort Worth and Dallas, man, a lot of people got to pay homage to the Temple of New African Unity, man, when, it's, when it comes to kicking off and starting off or getting to launch an origin on how they're going to move in this movement and how they're going to do their things in the community, man. A lot of them, a lot of people started in Temple. Facts. They did and did. A lot of people, lot of people won't admit it, but yeah, <laughs> you know. Man, because at that time, I know we're going off topic for a little bit, but at that time, it wasn't really like Fort Worth was that mecca for for RBG. Like y'all was holding it down. Like when that people thought of RBG, they thought about Fort Worth and the things that y'all was doing in Fort Worth at that time. Like y'all had a strong presence, not just in the DFW area. But nationwide, people would congregate yeah. down in Fort Worth in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex uh, to to soak in what y'all was what y'all was you know giving out at that time, man. I think it was just a perfect storm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's all about timing and the right people in a certain situation, man. And uh, we were just fortunate, you know, me and some more brothers, uh, Baba Amin, brother Ali Africa, uh, brother Kali, a few more other brothers. Uh, you know, we decided we wanted to do something. We wanted to make a difference. And uh, we did it unapologetically. And we did it flagrant. We did it real aggressive. You know. Exactly. And, and, uh, and the work is there. When you look at it now. You look at things now. You see everything have red, black, and green this. Red, black, and green that. 
you know, it ain't just all of a sudden that started happening. It was because right. of the things y'all was doing locally and nationally that sparked right. everything. Like even uh the Juneteenth, you was like that the ice cream had red, black, and green on it. Like right. that's not by accident. That was because of what people saw the RBG nation put in nationwide. And 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 that was just the fruits of everything sprouting out from that hard work, spreading that message of pa pan Africanism and the message of uh Garvinism uh nationwide. Yeah, man. Uh super shout out to those who came before us, man, who who represent the red, black, and green. It's a lot of people, man, that uh laid the foundation and made it um possible for us to you know take the baton and move forward and and, and taking the direction that we seen fit, but we definitely um, sparked a, a movement for sure, you know, uh, throughout the nation, man, different RBG chapters, RBG nation chapters throughout the country, you know, shout out Little Rock, Milwaukee, Memphis, mm -hmm. Charlotte, Florida. <clears throat> and then we came together, man, and we um we did some powerful things, man, and, 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 the, and the branch is still growing, you know? Uh, it's not as active as I would like it to be, but but people got their instructions, right? And people moved out on the instructions, man. You can see the fruits of the labor all across the country, man. It's uh, something to be proud of, man. And uh, I don't think it gets a, its, proper, its proper respect. You know, I see a lot of people doing a lot of things, man. And uh, it makes me proud. Yeah. Just shout out to, uh, just shout out to uh, Judge and the Blackbirds, yep. man, for yep. keeping that... Uh, Keeping Garvin that Garvey day. day. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, yeah, people need yeah, to support I was that, to man. That was a perfect example. Garvey Day, like, like just the idea of having that Garvey Day, man, that's 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 an offshoot of the work that y'all put in in them early years that carry on by other people, like you said. Absolutely, man. Shout out to uh, my brother and sister in Atlanta, uh, brother uh, uh, Coyote, man. They got an event coming up, uh, at the end of August in Atlanta, man, an RBG, uh, some RBG um, music conference, music fest, something like that. Uh, a lot of RBG affiliates, man, they're going to be performing. And uh, mm. that's going to be dope. Check that out, man. Uh, you got uh, Brother Truth in Detroit. Got the Black Power Block Party. That's coming up this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that brother definitely represents. And uh, that's my co-host. As a matter of fact, on the Hip Hop School Past and Present. And uh, he got some big things popping in Detroit, man. Yeah, yeah. man. And, and people gotta remember, man. Like we, uh, we ain't no, no young folks, man. So it's time for the young, younger generation step up. You know, like everyone. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting close. I'm not quite up there, but man, I'm pushing forward myself. And then you up there, like it's time for us to sit down, man. Yeah, you know, <laughs> um, I was definitely happy when Black Empowerment Movement took the mantle, man, and, and, and y'all stepped out strong. And, and continue to step out strong, man. Um, I rarely vouch for certain shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I have a certain uh, certain lines I draw, certain um, certain things that I, you know, I, I hold to. And, and one thing about you and, and Jessica and Regina and the whole crew, man, y'all um, y'all held the line. Y'all did a lot of good things in the community, man. I was very impressed. My boy, yeah. uh, what's Pretty my sure. boy name? Big uh, Brady. Big Brady, man. Yeah. Shout out to Big Brady and the whole Black and Power movement. My boy OB. Oh everybody, yeah. OB, everybody who yeah. was, was down. Yeah. yeah man. Um, you know I don't fuck with too many people. You don't. <laughs> you don't. I so, learned my lesson. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, we went off, but we had to go into RBG. You know, it's, it's Garvey's birthday, so we had to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but the but the getting to what y'all see on the thumbnail, Ross. You know, Ross Supreme. Supreme. Let's get into it. Okay. Give us the background of this beef, man. Where does where all this started from? Tell like for people that don't know. Where this beef, like, wherever you want to start it at, take us to. That's give us the foundation of what where this beef all originated. What, what, from. what beef you talking about? We talking about this beef between uh, Game and Slim Shady, Eminem. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it started. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Um, I thought the game was cool with him. You know, I've seen the game. 
publicly praised Eminem on a few occasions. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I think they all come on under that uh, Interscope umbrella, that Dre tree. So, yeah, he's that basically part of the team, you know. Uh, so I don't know, man. I guess Game done heard something or seen something or felt a certain weight, man. And he done dropped his album. He dropped this, uh, this diss track to Black Shim, uh, Slim Shady. I thought it was an okay diss. You know, it wasn't nothing um, too spectacular about it, but you know, I don't mind when black people diss uh, white folks at all. <laughs> right. You know, so even if it's whack, it's still cool to me. Yeah. I give it a pass. So do you yeah. do and, and and the reason and folks for y'all don't know, I know he, he mentioned it already. See, I'ma say this. I look at Supreme Rock, you are a a hip hop head. You have Absolutely. a vast knowledge of the history of hip hop. Yes, everything from, from the East Coast, the South, the Midwest, the West Coast. Uh you have the knowledge. You you old enough to the the be blessed enough to see the early beginnings of the hip hop stage through the the eighties or the, the mid to late eighties, the nineties, all the way up to the present day. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so you you can really look at things from a from a perspective that I can't. You know, even though I'm an eighties baby, but mm-hmm. you was old enough to really grasp the eighties hip hop like it needs to be. You know, put in a proper perspective. Right. So when when you look at these things like uh what what the game is doing, do you feel like he's doing it just for for the sale records? Or do you really feel like he have an issue with the, how people portray Eminem? Uh, yeah, I really don't get it twisted. I don't think game no revolutionary for the coach as, you know, against white folks type person. Uh, I definitely think it's for personal gain. You know what I'm saying? Record sales. I feel like uh, he feels like he feels like he doesn't get his proper recognition and and respect in this in the hip hop game, and uh, he wants to go after Eminem. But I don't think Dang, uh, I don't think Game doing it for the coach or nothing like that. I don't think he on no black and white shit. Mm-hmm. I don't think he on drew, drew the line in the sand, you know. Yeah, and then somebody just coming. Uh, Hannibal Bay said because Eminem yeah, ain't on all that. Game was doing his job. Most n words and hip hop be be uh derided. Eminem did very hard. Keep it real, like and uh, very few keep it real, like praying. Absolutely, man. Hannibal is right, man. A lot, you know, niggas been dick riding Eminem in the industry, man. You know, for certain reasons, you know, you got certain people that you know align with him, and you got certain niggas like Royce the Five Nine who really be cooning hard for him, mm. like really, like really be jumping in front of the bullet for him and shit. So, man, you know what happens, man. It's in hip hop. It's in life. You know, the shit. Well, let's break it down since we you brought it up. Then that's that's shed mm. some light on things. Mm-hmm. Um, in your honest opinion, like that's 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 doing a deep dive. Why people be our uh, dick riding Eminem? Uh, you know, Eminem part of a powerful crew. He part of a powerful movement. You, you know, it's hard to go up against Dre and Fifty Cent. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's their boy. They covered him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, you know, black people don't. You know, black people we 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 try real hard not to seem racist. Hmm. Very yeah. hard. That's some embedded coon shit that's inside of us. You know, some 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 deep krakatosis, man, where we just, you know, we always give a disclaimer. I ain't trying to be racist or nothing. Or <laughs> I ain't racist or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same type of shit. It's the same mentality, you know. So so do you are you uh are you uh saying that uh Eminem uh like you don't have any talent? Like uh, Some no. people say, man, he got flow. You see how fast he be rapping? You see how he be putting rhymes and words? I'm going to say this, man. I'm going to say this about Eminem. I don't really care about the culture vulture shit because black people be culture vultures. Okay, okay. Yeah, Ron, was Ron DMC culture vultures when they did the walk this way rock and roll shit? You know what I'm saying? Was Lil Wayne a, a culture vulture when he dressed like a rock and roll motherfucker that he brought in the skinny jeans and the rock and roll look you know what i'm saying so you know i you know white people always been a part of hip-hop early so i really ain't tripping on that because we don't control the shit 
So if we don't control it, I really don't waste my time complaining about who, which race is rapping. You know what I'm saying? My yeah. thing is, <clears throat> it's the hypocrisy and the double standards that, you know, the, the white boy, can, he know how to rap. You know what I'm saying? He know how to put words together. You know, uh, is it, uh, he has he impressed me? I mean, he ain't impressed me no more than the average hip hopper that put words together like that. The black, the average black hip hop that put words together like that. And it's, it's a lot of people, man, a lot of MCs, man, that rap in that category with Eminem, but they don't get that same praise. And he only gets it because he's white. He's mm. a prime example of white privilege. Mm. So yeah. you said he he have the skills, but the skills was was over just blown up because of, of the crew he runs with. He got the, he got the skills. He got the somebody use an example like Red Man. Okay, Red Man, I, I feel like they they got similar uh, animated styles, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but Red Man ain't ain't selling a hundred million. He ain't got a seventy million records on his belt. But if Red Man was white, he'd be up there, bro. Mm. I never thought about that. You are exactly right. Red Man is That's that my problem, exactly. man. That's my problem. And he ain't all that. It's, you know what I'm saying? He know how to rap. He made some good songs in the past. You know, it's about two or three of them that I say, okay, I like that song. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but as far as him being a rap god and niggas be putting him in their top five and ten and all that old type shit, he ain't even in my top 90. Wow. You know? Wow. Yeah. yeah so. It's 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 just niggas like to praise white folks. We love inviting them to the barbecue when they seem cool. You know what so, I'm saying? Will you call? Will you consider him uh, for us as saying Eminem is an industry plant at that time? No, I'm sure he's a real MC. He, okay. he, 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 a, he a trailer park white boy who fell in love with hip hop, like a lot of white people do. And he he grabbed a pen and pad, and you know he put in his work, and he got with the right machine. You know, Interscope and Dre and 50 and all them, he got the right machine and they pushed him. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't call him an industry plant. I don't even know what the fuck that is sometimes. You know, I don't get into the conspiracy <laughs> shit too much, man. I just can't. I think that people like to rap and make money, man. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. So, so let's, let, let me ask you this, dude. So, from you already answered this. So, it kind of sounds like you, you, do you feel like, it's the role of black people because hip hop is foundation. I think black people are the foundation of the creators of what we call hip hop, you know. For sure. For sure. So as the custodian of the creation of this form of this genre of, of music, is the it's oh we are the custodian of controlling, protecting, and how is you know who we say is the rap guy, be. And this and that. So do the it's up to us to protect this. We can't. We can't just be throwing a well, you random can't, you man can't, white boy. You in can't here protect. Action. You can't protect nothing you don't own. Only thing we're doing is complaining. Our protection becomes in complaints and, and posts and social media posts and so how that's do we our get protection. Control? Take back control. I don't know. I mean, Come a lot of ideas. I know you have an idea. Uh, I mean, right now you have a lot of ways to control your own music. You know what I'm saying? But as far as trying to control hip hop as a whole, I mean, we ain't gonna never do that shit. You can't do it. It's out the box. It's everywhere. Every country. How are we gonna control it? It's out there, man. People can load up. They said uh NBA Young Boy recorded half his album inside his Tesla. <laughs> So you just can record anyway and upload anybody, anywhere, any language, any race, anywhere. It is what it is. We missed the opportunity. We missed the opportunity to control some shit we created, which happens a lot with us. What, what because was, we so, what was that because we're so fucking friendly. So what was when was that opportunity we had to control it? When was that? When, when it first when it first came out. When we when the, when the first the first rappers out of New York ran to the Jewish and white record labels okay. for record deals because at that time 
that was the only way to, you know, to them, that was the only way to get your music out. So once the once the Jewish and white record labels seen, okay, this shit is spreading. This we can make some money off this shit. It was a wrap. But then you know you had independent artists throughout the South, independent owners like Jay Prince and Luther Campbell and you know Master P and Baby. You know they they control you know somewhat. You know, so I don't know, man. Somebody dropped the ball. Well, the, well, we have the blueprint. You just name a, a, a few names. That's the blueprint right there. Especially in the age of information, this internet. You, you technically you don't need a record deal right now. Well, so you control, I mean, you control what weird. you can. You control what you can. You know, if they want to come together and put a distribution, you don't even need no distribution companies no more because it ain't no CD, ain't nobody buying no CDs. It's all digital. It's all on the internet. So yeah, I mean I ain't, I ain't I ain't tripping on the on the um total governing controlling aspect of hip hop. I ain't tripping off that shit. Plenty of black people making money. People, uh, plenty of black people are in ownership positions. So yeah, yep, that's true. And, and I think I think like you said, at to a certain level, I feel like you you're right where. We don't have to per se have this uh, person we need to have per se answering to, but at the same time as a, a group of people that created the music, we do have to have some type of stewardship of it at the same time. What, what's your thought? Cause we got to have some type of responsibility with it at the same time. And like you said, it's out there. Like we can't just pull it back in. I get that point. Like yeah. every I mean, it's too wide. It's too wide open, bro. It's too wide open. It's too wide open. And then black people, we don't agree on a lot. Of, we, how are we gonna agree on any goddamn thing when we come to hip hop? You know, they were just arguing now that it might not even be from the Bronx. It's New York cats saying it's from Brooklyn now. So niggas can't argue on the. Uh, can't even you know come together on the origin of the shit. Let alone let's pull it back and start controlling some shit. And then a lot of this shit is individualistic, man. And nah, that's a that's a losing battle, bro. You you spinning your wheels trying to rein this shit back in, nigga. This shit is a loose motherfucking animal. Mm. So so now with you, I, I think I think for the people that's watching, that's go that's that's back it up. Let's talk about what is hip hop. You the perfect person to to, to answer this. Mm -hmm. Well, so, from my understanding, my understanding research, man, hip hop started in the South Bronx. Uh, they say that the, the godfather of hip hop is uh, Cool Herc. Uh, hip hop is a combination of different elements, MCing, DJing, uh, break dancing, and graffiti. And some people add fashion now. So you know, it was a, it was a, it started in in, in the Bronx with parties and DJing and people grabbing the mic, getting a getting the crowd hyped. In the early 70s, I think it was 72 or 73. Uh, and it just evolved from there, man, to going on wax and MCing uh, being more complicated. Uh, MCs talking about social issues. You know, first it was just party, you know, get up, get high, grab the mic, one, two, one, two, everybody party and dance. But then people, you know, like the message from Melly Mel and them. They told the whole story about the conditions of the ghetto and the environment. You know, LL came on the scene, Run DMC, Fat Boys, man, and everybody had something to say. And it just yeah. took off, man. It spread, man. Exactly. And 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 I'm glad you brought up that point. I'm I'm glad. Thank you for that answer. Because when we create music, we have a long tradition and a long history of talking about things in black culture at that time. Uh, with our music, we express it through our music. We whether they're talking about, uh, you know, people talking about the blues fest, uh, talking about the sorrows of this, that in their time frame to bootlegging on down to we created rock and roll. Uh, all forms of music we talk about stuff going on. We create dances and all well, of throughout, that. Throughout all history, our man. Music. Throughout history, throughout you know African history, man. We've always used music. For, for more than entertainment. You exactly. know, it's documented evidence. Music was used for healing. 
music was used for war. You know, the spoken word was used to pass down stories and, and, and different rituals. You know what I'm saying? The drums, all of those type shit, man. So hip hop is just a, it was a combination of all those things, especially living in America. It was bound, some bound to come out to the, the greatest people that ever walked this earth coming out of slavery, you know? Exactly. And as the creator, this is just me talking now, and I feel like as the creator of this particular form of music, Eminem do not represent none of that. For one, he don't represent the black experience. And for you to be the rap god of a, a particular genre of music that was created by black people, regardless, Brooklyn, Bronx, fucking Timbuktu, wherever the fuck. He represents the white experience. Folks. He represents his white experience he coming from his white experience. And as a and and as a person representing the white experience, you can't be the fucking rap god of any type of black music genre if you represent the fucking white experience. This is a black experience. By created by black people, so you can't be the god of no form of genre of music created by us talking about your white experience. That just that's just well, what it is. I think that um, like with everything else, man, uh, black people give them these people power, but and niggas start niggas fell in love with Eminem. You know, not everybody, but yeah. a lot of people was praising him. Ooh. You hear that? Ooh, you're right. Put that shit together, man. And so just like with spirituality, everything else, man, they co-opt the shit. They come on, man. They take advantage of the shit, man, and, and do what their parasitic nature allows them to do. And and a lot of times, and now I want to hop on our brothers and sisters, like a lot of times when we see it with anything regarding white people, they can do the littlest thing that's somewhat black and we blow it up to this high levels. We blow it up to high levels just because they can do the mediocre. Don't lo and behold, let them do something more than mediocre. Oh mm -hmm. my God, they the best they ever done it. Oh my God, they the rap God. Oh my God, they the dancing God. Like, right. get the fuck out of here, man. They just doing shit. Just, they just got to do a little bit of shit. Just a little. Just a well, little. You know, sometimes, man, you know, black people are just naive. You know, we know that white people done so much evil and bullshit. It amazes some of us when they do something somewhat cool or someone somewhat not fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So we get happy and we start dancing, man. And we start saying motherfuckers like Adele comparing her to Whitney Houston and shit. Silly shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. It don't take much. It don't, don't take, take much. much at all. That's all. Just and, and we gotta and, and we live in a society where the the uh the mass majority of the people are white people. So, like you said, our music is not controlled by us uh, corporate wise. So whenever they can find something, a spark of somebody that can do a little bit half of what we can do, they're gonna promote the fuck out of it. And push right. it out there to the masses of their people so they can make more money. And then if you get this oppression because it's promoted and you see it a lot, of people are talking about it and blowing it, blowing it up. So people get that, they hear it all the time and say, Oh, he might he I guess he is the best, you know. Right, right, right. Man, I mean, so, you know, you can't stop nobody from liking shit. I learned that a long time ago, man. You know, everybody ain't gonna think like me. Everybody not gonna see the picture like I see it, man. So what I do is I find like-minded people. And that's who I roll with. You know what I'm saying? And uh it is what it is, man. It's entertainment at the end of the day, man. And entertainment, man, gonna entertain people in different ways and different forms. Exactly. Man. Exactly. So so guys, y'all, hey, this this what we're talking about right now, this is just like the 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 surface level. Y'all need to go. If y'all on Facebook watching this or on YouTube watching this for this amount, y'all gotta go to the Facebook group, Hip Hop Past and Present. Hip Hop School. Hip Hop School Past and Present. Man, I tell you, when I tell you they be going in talking about hip hop, 
on all different type of topics. Like right. I just be I just be I just be reading the comments. I be like, damn, they go I can't even like I don't even be want to jump in sometimes. They be going in so hard. I be like, let me gotta, just you gotta pack your tool when you come to the hip hop school, man. And uh it gets it gets it ain't for the week. You know, I've had a few people that I consider hip hop heads that have bowed out and tucked their nuts and, and left the group, you know what I'm saying? Cause they couldn't couldn't take the pressure, man. So don't come in with all that old soft crybaby shit. You you can't. And it shocked me because one, I didn't I was shocked that people were so I'm not shocked people are passionate about hip hop, but just the how passionate they, they were in that group to defend their points. And right. they were so passionate. So passionate. I, I, I like man, I thought they were gonna be a chill, laid back type. Mm -hmm. It is chill and laid back to certain aspects, but right. man. When they go in and when they they did they trenches in, it's a it's a war. It be going on for like a whole week. <laughs> right, right, man. I've seen I've seen some topics go on for a couple weeks. I mean, for twenty four hours, seven days for twenty four hours, nonstop. You know, uh, you know, hip hop is the is the is the voice of our culture. It's the voice of our generation, man. I fell in love with hip hop when I was four years old, nineteen eighty. Wow. Uh, playing, playing with my uncle's little radio, and wow. I heard uh, I heard uh, uh, Soul Sonic Force play at your own risk, play that rock, and that shit was so different, but yet powerful. And that shit just I fell in love instantly, man. And my story is the story of a lot of black people in America, man. And uh, hip hop dump the hip hop culture dominates the world. Hip hop is the number one selling genre in the world. It used to be country, but not anymore. It used to be rock and roll, but not anymore. It's hip hop, man. So, man, people are passionate about their music, man. I'm passionate about hip hop for sure. Yeah, man, very passionate. Oh, this is a good comment. Uh, Hannibal Ray said, uh, uh, Deja was tripping about Eminem. Um, she, she, you know what? I want to say Deja. The Asian was tripping. She just had her own point of view on it, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, like a lot of people uh, have a point of view regarding Eminem. She she uh, came under the, the tricks of the media to think he's really greater than what he really is. Can't fault her for that. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to say this about the Asian. You can't whoop her. <laughs> I can't. And a, dry, and a dry bitch could never. So regardless <laughs> of if we disagree on Eminem or not, that's my sister. That's the vice principal of the whole school. That's my co-host. That's my friend. And you know, I'm gonna roll with her. I'm ain't, I ain't ain't gonna roll with her in the name of Eminem, <laughs> but I'm gonna roll with her in the name of man. She can she can she can have an opinion on how she wanna have it. Yeah, yeah but, her, but her Eminem yeah, opinion, her Eminem opinion is definitely trash for sure. And but they say you need to suspend her in the school, man. No, nah, she can't get suspended. She's unsuspendable. Okay. Well, you heard that, Hannibal, man. You, yeah, matter of fact, for that comment, you get suspended, Hannibal, for, for even trying to uh, cause disruption amongst the staff. So when we get through with this show, I'm definitely suspending you, brother. <laughs> he he tried to he try to cause problems in there, man, the school, and man. Shout out, shout out to Hannibal Bay, man. That's my brother, man. Good brother. Strong brother, man. Uh, very knowledgeable brother. Uh, that's a good brother, man. Man, good. So, so what? So, what you have going on uh, with uh, regarding the channel? Any upcoming guests coming up, or any topics? Man, you know, we just—I ain't got—I don't know, man. We ain't got nothing, you know, to surprise the people with, man. We just gonna keep giving them content. We're gonna keep building the foundation, man. Uh, we're gonna keep uh, growing this thing organically, keeping it hip hop, keeping up with the past, present, and future of hip hop, man. Uh, it's a dope podcast, and we growing, man. I'm happy. I'm happy with the progress. I'm happy with all the guests we done had. We done had a few uh, controversial figures on the show, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I like it, man. It's dope. Yeah. Keep it going, man, because in the short amount of time y'all had the uh, created the YouTube channel, it is it has grown so fast, man, and you, and the consistency of the the views y'all have. Oh uh, man, it's 
it's it's it's growing fast, man. So keep it up. Y'all gotta keep yes, that sir. going. Thank man. you, brother. Thank you, man. Shout out, you. shout out to uh uh Heezy, Brother Truth, and DeAsia, man. Uh also shout out to Mental Son, man, who he also helped us get this thing started, man. So uh yeah. And shout out to the other people who watch, man, who participate, who come on the show, man. Uh shout out to all those who uh the consistent viewers. Man, hey, we appreciate that, man. And the sky's the limit, man. We about to blow that thing up. And we not no industry people. You see what I'm saying? When you industry, you can you can start a podcast and get hundreds of thousands of views and subscribers right off the rip. We're going to build this thing brick by brick. And at, at the end, it's going to look like a fucking pyramid. Yeah, and, and it's hard work, man. For, for what y'all done in a short amount of time, that's, that's great because a lot of people that don't do YouTube don't understand this it's it takes work to grow it takes channel. work it takes patience and uh it takes integrity and we got all of we got all those things man we just uh we being patient and uh it's gonna blow man we're exactly. ahead of schedule we're ahead of schedule for sure definitely ahead of schedule man definitely has schedule just by just going to your youtube channel looking at your thumbnails I'm like man that's top notch right there. Y'all got top notch thumbnails. Y'all have great topics. Like uh -huh. y'all have all the agreements to make a, a a channel that can really blow the fuck up. Like keep just keep doing what you're doing and and salute to y'all, man. But but other than that, man, I think we didn't hit on all the topics of this slim shady character. Yeah, uh, I'm just glad you was able to come on to clear up a. Uh, a lot of things regarding that because I I think most of the most of the time it's media it's media driven uh, game on the game part I don't think like you said game he's not no revolutionary type person he ain't a person necessarily trying to protect the culture of hip hop I think he's at the end of the day he's an opportunist to as well when it comes to certain things and. And I think he want to take his shot at Eminem because he is connected to 50 Cent uh, in a certain – because of that as well, like you mentioned. Uh, but at the same time, I love it. I right, love right. it. And I want to say this too, it. man. Um, we live in America, man. Everybody culture vultures. Every fucking – every this is, this is a melting pot. Whether my pro-black people, you know, niggas is – Niggas do shit white people do. Asians do shit we do. Mexicans do shit we do. Everybody biting off each other, man. You know, do I think it's good for us? Probably not. But I don't get into the culture vulture things because niggas, we, we do a lot of culture vulture shit too. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a, let, me, let me challenge you on that. I know you said skinny jeans and, and the rock, uh, run DMC, rock my way, but technically, we created rock and roll, so technically, it's not. Is it? Is it really culture vulture? Like when we created yeah, rock because, and roll, because because that shit, the way them crackers do it is not the way we did it. We start copying the way the crackers do it. We start looking the way they do it, the way they dress, not the way the, the black rock and roll people was doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that's that that we ain't we ain't copying black rock and roll. We are copying white rock and roll. But the That's lines kind of get kind of get blurred. What's white and what's who who tight ass guns and roses jeans with you know tight ass nut hugging ass that shit ain't black. But 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 Rick, but Supreme, we didn't we didn't rock it like that either. Like when 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 Dipset came about, you know they weren't rocking they skull and bones like them, them white boys. But where but where the skull and bones shit come from? White folks. Fuck, we start rocking skull and bones and, and big ass chains from our motherfucking pockets. I don't want no black shit. Never. That skateboard shit wasn't no black shit. Got that from them. It's all kind of examples of us being culture vultures, having dogs in our house. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't defend that one right there. Yeah. I'm from, listen, I'm from Mississippi. I'm, are you from Fort Worth? Uh, where I'm from, when I ain't see dogs in the house, I moved to the city. Yeah, man, that's new. That's new. 
Yeah, yeah we ain't do that shit. We ain't do that shit, man. Like we, this we, didn't even, we didn't even get tattoos, really. No, no, not like not that. We didn't get the sleeves. Yeah, that was some white boy shit. But we did get tattoos. But when the sleeves, now they are the white folks did the sleeves. Okay, I mean, man, I might have to have a whole man. We might, we might have to do a whole nother show on this topic right here. Oral sex, oh. that's some white folks shit. We got there from them. Hold on, Rick. Yeah. We ain't do that shit coming up. You younger than me. That shit was taboo as fuck. You was a weirdo if you did that shit on both male and female. You was a hoe if you did it, if you was a female, and you was a nasty nigga if you did it when, if you was a man. They made that shit cool. We copied it. And we do it. Rick, I would like to... I, I'm not saying it wasn't cool... I think people, we were more private about it. I guess. I, work well. I can roll with that. <laughs> oh, let me read these comments. Emily Powell said, wait, wait a minute, minute now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, y'all see it? Hold on. I dropped, the, I dropped the link to join on. Let me drop the link again. Hey, where, where, the, where the fuck did we start smoking hookah? Where we get that shit from? Oh, hold on, man. Oh. That's white folks shit, man. Hold on. So, if y'all, hold on. Since I got the guests on here, I dropped the link back in the in the chat. If, hey, y'all, click the link to join in. I bring you on. Come on, come. let's go. Come, come on, cause Evelyn said, uh. <laughs> nah, hey, listen, Miss Powell, Evelyn Powell, don't get it twisted. We all get down. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. The things that we copy from them. I'm missing something too, man. It's a couple more things, bro. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. I, well, like you said, I'm gonna defer to you because you you old a little older than me. Uh -huh. So you might know better. <laughs> I can pick popping pills come from them. We ain't pop pills, man. That's that was foreign to us. Oh yeah. They started, they they started, they they started with the ecstasy shit. Popping pills and Adderall and and a lot of those type of shit. Really, man, they come from them. You're right because I was in college. White folks was on that Adderall like crazy. I was like, what y'all doing? What the what y'all trying to use this to stay the study? What is, huh? I I just need some. Now that now people. niggas doing mushrooms. Where they come from? What doing what? Niggas doing mushrooms now. That was white boy shit coming up. Oh yeah, yeah. Now nah, I yep, that definitely was some, some white folks stuff. All oh, the shit, that, all the shit that we didn't do, man, it come from them, man. We all culture vultures. White people call each other nigga now. I live, I, man. I live right next door to a park, right? Uh huh. I, I live in probably the most diverse neighborhood in America. You got blacks, whites, Mexicans, Africans, but Africans, Africans from the continent, uh, Asians, Arabs. Uh, the whole thing, and I was outside. I heard some, I heard some kids in the park, and they just kept calling each other niggas and bitches. I ain't see one. <laughs> I ain't see one black child in sight. <laughs> I ain't see one black child in sight. It was all other races calling each other niggas and shut up, bitch ass nigga. These Arabs and Mexicans and and <clears throat> so yeah, man, it's all one big melting pot called America. And, and they know how to, and for the most part, they know how to cut it off when they get around black folks too, which is which is good. Absolutely, and we know how to turn on our white boys. I do it all the time. So. On two, I on used to. Do it. I don't do it no more. I don't. I used to. I be like fucking now, you know. But you know, I don't be tripping, man. We all do it, man. Man, it, man. well, it seems like nobody want to uh, come on. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much going to end it there. So, man, I, I just want to thank you for coming on. Man, I finally thank got you, to, brother. I finally got you to come on, man. We're gonna have, we got to do more of this, man, because I don't know. I really don't know what the fuck you going to taste shit. Hey, man, you know, I don't, you know, it's uh before the podcast, I ain't like being on camera like that. You hardly oh, ever look, see look, me going live. We got Hannibal on here. Hey, what, what's good? What up? What up? What's up, man? What's up, bro? What up with it, Hannibal? What's cool, up, man? Hey, man. Hey, let me let me start out with this. Uh, I'm gonna 
I'm gonna give y'all words. Hey, now let's get y'all words. Okay, appreciate it, man. Appreciate you coming through. Yeah, man. I'm glad he came through. I oh shit. Yeah. It, his sound was bad. I have. I appreciate the roses. Oh, uh, but yeah, man, that 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 was good stuff. Like I said, man, I gotta have you on here more often, though, man. Because yes, sir, man, I'm I'm getting used to being on the camera, man. You know, I talk a lot of shit, man. But you hardly ever see me going live. I ain't the type, you know. So yeah, I'm here, man. You you have the you have like you you so. Like you can, you know, so many different topics. You can talk about so many different things and hit on so many different stuff, man. That's why I'm like, I gotta get you on, man, because yes, sir. You, you can talk well, about anything. Like we can just we can go talking about the the uh, the RBG. Then we can talk about the 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 Slim, uh, the Eminem shit. Uh, you, well, you man, you know, I didn't I didn't get this knowledge by myself, man. Shout out to my family, man. My aunt, my mama, my grandma. Man, you know, they made me read early. You know, I could read by the time I was about three or four, man. So I always been thirsty for knowledge, man. So shout out to them. <clears throat> shout out to all the teachers I've had over the years. So it, it just ain't me, man. I just, I like to study. I like to research. I like to read. And uh, I don't know everything, man. But if I feel like I got a, a lane where I can help somebody understand if I don't understand, I can point them in the right direction to somebody who do. Man, good stuff. And guys, before we get out of here, I just want to uh, remind you, hey, still remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Black Empowerment Movement. If you're watching right now live, uh, just go to our YouTube channel, Black Empowerment Movement. Hit the right. uh, subscribe button. Uh, go through, look at some videos. If you agree or disagree, leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, but also remember to share the videos as well. We trying to, you know, the only way I can keep doing this, keep bringing guests on, you subscribe and like videos. Let me know, let YouTube know that you like what you're watching at the same time. And, uh, also please go subscribe to my brother channel, you know, the hip hop school past and present, you know, go subscribe to that YouTube channel as well. You know, cause we're out they, both they, channels, they, man. They, one big talk. family. It's one big tree, man. One big family tree down here in Dallas Fort Worth, man. And we doing our thing, man. Hey, Dallas Fort Worth running the goddamn social media right now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, okay. folks. We we about to bounce out of here. Uh, if you just jumped on, I see we got five people watching. If you just jump on, remember this. Uh, once this video is over with, you'll go back. You'll be able to go back and watch the whole thing later on. Uh, but right now we out of here. Before we get out of here, as always, all power to the people. And we out of here. Y'all take care. Black power, black power, black power.